Doxing has always been a problem online. It's a common tactic used to harass others. Doxing is the act of posting someone's personal information online, such as their name, phone number, or address, with the intention that other people online will harass them. This is enough of a problem on its own and has led to a wide range of crimes, from harmless pranks all the way up to full-on violent crimes, such as swatting. For those of you who don't know, swatting is when you call the authorities and report that someone is in the middle of committing a crime, usually in the form of harming someone or holding hostages, so that the SWAT team will bust down their door and arrest them, or probably worse. Many online streamers will first have their personal information leaked online, which leads to trolls and bullies calling the local authorities, reporting that, for example, the streamer is holding hostages in their home. Reporting of crimes such as this will give the police the right to come into the person's home without a warrant, as lives could be on the line. Whenever the SWAT team is involved, a number of things can go wrong. Uh, schools, buildings, offices, even residential homes could be evacuated. The SWAT team also carries military-style gear, such as door breaching tools, submachine guns, assault rifles, and even sniper rifles. If the SWAT team is told that lives are in danger and someone is acting suspicious as they enter the building, they could easily mistake their behavior as aggressive and do what they need to to take them out of commission. Now, Obviously this can and does go very wrong, and of course swatting is a crime. In most countries, even the act of making a false emergency report to the authorities in itself is a crime. Over time, the punishment for this crime has gradually increased, as unfortunately, cases of swatting have only been increasing over the years. Before the era of the internet, calling in bomb threats to police was quite common. These calls were made in order to cause a panic or to force a local business or school to shut down. When I was little in school, I remember getting a threat probably once or twice a year, and we would usually get evacuated for a couple of hours and just have to stand around outside and wait, or just go home if it was late enough in the day. Over time, people began finding more ways to disguise their identity over the phone and call in more elaborate pranks. Eventually, in the mid-2000s, people began reporting violent crimes instead of bombs, leading to what we know today as swatting. By 2008, the FBI had begun using the term to refer to these incidents. In 2004, a young, blind computer hacker, which sounds like an achievement, honestly, named Matthew Wiegman, at age 14, called the authorities, claiming that he had a gun and was holding a girl he knew and her father at gunpoint. The woman had scorned Matthew, refusing his offers to talk dirty over the phone with him. He had become addicted to pranking people over the phone, often using his skills to commit fraud and harass women. He didn't face any punishment for the crime, leading to a long career of over 60 swatting incidents over the years. In 2008, a Verizon employee began investigating Matthew, so he went the usual route and began intimidating and harassing the investigator. Soon after he was arrested, and in 2009 was sentenced to 11 years in prison for crimes related to his involvement in a swatting conspiracy. In 2012, a political commentator named Eric Erickson, what a name, was the victim of a swatting case. An unknown caller, pretending to be Erickson, reported to the police that he had shot his wife and was planning to shoot someone else. I just shot my wife, so I don't think I could come down there. She's dead now. I'm looking at her. I'm going to shoot someone else soon, he said. Police then broke into his home, and according to Erickson, this was not an isolated incident. Throughout 2013, celebrities became a common target. Police were being called to the homes of so many celebrities, such as Justin Bieber, Miley Cyrus, and the Kardashians, that the governor of California at the time, Jerry Brown, signed in a new law that aimed to crack down on the crime. In 2014, a teenage boy in Canada was arrested after making 30 false 911 calls, including death threats, bomb threats, and calls with the intention of swatting others. His calls had led to the evacuation of a shopping mall, several schools, and even homes. He bragged about his escapades online, threatening others, boasting, and even reported that he had been making money by swatting on behalf of others. 
The boy was unable to be identified due to his young age. Swatting became more and more common in connection with online gaming, namely during live streams. One of the first cases of swatting to go viral took place back in August of 2014, when a YouTuber named Jordan Matthewson was targeted while in the middle of streaming some video games. Abruptly during a stream, a SWAT team broke into his office and took him to the ground. A viewer of the stream was able to find Jordan's address and then proceeded to call 911 and report that he was armed and holding hostages in his office. The footage spread all over the internet, likely inspiring even more cases. Swatting began being associated with gaming, mainly livestream gaming. It was a popular tactic of trolls, bullies, and sadists all over the world, resulting in more and more incidents. In January of 2015, a man claiming to be Dallas Horton told police that he had placed a bomb at a nearby preschool. Police rushed to his house to arrest him, breaking into the home. The real Dallas Horton, being completely unaware of the phone call, had no idea who was breaking into his home and shot at the two officers, mainly the police chief, Louis Ross, who he shot several times in the chest. Luckily, Ross was wearing a bulletproof vest and lived. No charges were placed against Horton, as the call was a hoax. This further opened the world's eyes to the dangers of this practice. The dangerous practice eventually culminated in the case of Andrew Thomas French in 2017. After losing a match in Call of Duty World War II, two teammates, Shane Gaskell and Casey Viner, began arguing, blaming each other for the loss of the game and causing them to lose a bet of a dollar and fifty cents. They took the fight to Twitter, where Viner began threatening to swat Gaskell. Viner threatened to swat Gaskell during the argument, and for some bizarre reason, Gaskell decided to try and call his bluff while giving him an address. However, he gave Viner the address of the home that his family used to reside in, in which they had been evicted from, and told him, I'm waiting. Viner, serious with his threats, then contacted Tyler Barris, a fellow Twitter user and longtime swatter who went by the name of uh, Swatistic. Calling through a library Wi-Fi connection to hide his identity, Barris called the Wichita police. He told them that his name was Brian, and that, at the given address, he had shot his father and was holding the rest of the family at gunpoint. He added that he had already poured gasoline all over the house and threatened to light it on fire, asking if police were on their way. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. They were arguing and I shot him in the head and he's not breathing anymore. Okay, do you have any weapons on you? Yeah, I do. I'm just pointing the gun at them, making sure they stay in the closet, my mom and my little brother. Okay, is there any way you can put the gun up? No. Are you guys sending someone over here? Because then I'm definitely not going to put it away. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and stay on the phone with you, okay? That's fine. Yeah, I'm thinking about, um, because I already poured gasoline all over the house. I might just set it on fire. Okay, well, we don't need to do that, okay? In a little bit, I might. Unfortunately, the Wichita Police Department weren't actual SWAT members and were untrained for such an operation. However, they had to respond. The man living at the address, Andrew Finch, opened the front door of the home, hearing something outside. He stepped out onto the front porch, confused, and was ordered to put his hands up. He raised them partway, then stopped. Reportedly, he then appeared to reach for his waistband. An officer fired a single shot from his rifle, piercing Finch's heart and going through his right lung. Walk this way! Walk. His mother heard his scream as the gunshot struck him. She, along with the rest of the family, were then ordered to exit the residence where they were then placed in handcuffs and brought in for questioning. Finch was quickly rushed to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Finch's niece, who witnessed the whole case, ended her life a few years later, with many blaming her mental state on this case. The police officer who shot Finch was never charged with a crime. 
Viner and Gaskell continued to argue over Twitter that night, with Gaskell informing Viner that he had given him a fake address, continuing to taunt him. A few hours later, they heard about what happened at the old address, and began to fear that they could be held accountable for what had happened. Their messages became panicked as they tried to cover their tracks, luckily failing at the task. Barris spoke out, saying that he didn't get anyone killed because he never fired a weapon. The incident quickly spread throughout the internet, with Barris admitting to the crime and bragging about it while also claiming that he was innocent because SWAT is not his profession. Within one single day, he appeared on an interview on YouTube in which he repeated his nonsense. So you you swatted that address, correct? Sure. Okay. Right. So you swatted the address. You put in the the fake hostage situation, correct? Yep. And then this guy gets killed. That's what happened, I guess. And you said I mean, you true. you said this on Twitter. You said I didn't get anyone killed because I didn't discharge a weapon, and being on a SWAT uh, a SWAT member isn't my profession. So do you, do you I take agree that. Right. Do you take any responsibility for what happened? Um, the argument can be made that the police would have never showed up if I didn't make the call. However, um, I don't believe that I'm the only guilty party involved in this whole incident, considering I was contacted and, um, you know, it almost instructed to SWAT and taunted to SWAT and address. Do you feel sad about it? Like, if I caused uh, somebody to die like that, I wouldn't be able to sleep. Is there any empathy? Uh, uh, well, I, it's my personal belief that I didn't cause someone to die, uh, I guess. According to him, he was not so worried that he would get in trouble. However, he was arrested one day after the incident. Technically, first being arrested for a bomb threat that he had previously admitted to online, he was soon extradited to Kansas where he was charged with involuntary manslaughter, among other things. Viner and Gaskell were also arrested as well. Gaskell was charged with obstruction of justice due to deleting evidence, wire fraud, and conspiracy to obstruct justice, and was later charged again after it was found that he tried to get Viner to try again when the initial swatting failed. Viner was charged with wire fraud, conspiracy to make false hoax reports, obstruction of justice, and conspiracy to obstruct justice. The swatter, Barris, got charged with false information and hoaxes, conspiracy to make false reports, cyber-stalking resulting in death, making threats of death or damage to property by fire, interstate threats, and wire fraud. Barris was additionally charged with 42 more charges in relation to previous hoax calls he had made to the police. It wasn't hard to charge him, as he had personally admitted to nearly all of them online. He pled guilty to 51 different charges, and it was recommended that he serve at least 20 years in prison. He was also made to apologize to the Finch family, pay over $10,000 in restitutions, and receive supervision until his sentencing. In the end, he was sentenced to prison, and isn't set to be released until 2035. Viner pleaded guilty to conspiracy and obstruction of justice, and ended up with 15 months in prison and 5 years of probation during which he isn't allowed to play any video games. What will happen to Gaskell is still up in the air. He was facing 60 years in prison, but it has been said that he's been able to make a deal with prosecutors. Time will tell. Due to a glitch in the system, Barris gained access to the internet for about 28 minutes one day in prison, during which he logged into an old Twitter account, proclaiming himself to be an e-god, and threatened to swat anyone who had been making fun of him. In response to the Finch case, the Kansas State Legislature approved a new bill in March 2018, making it so that causing a false alarm that results in injury or death is now a Class 1 felony, with a prison sentence of between 10 and 41 years. A new bill was introduced into the House of Representatives as well in 2019 that would strengthen penalties for the transmission of misleading or inaccurate caller identification information with the intent to trigger an emergency response. Various other smaller cases of swatting and emergency hoaxes continue to this day. 
McCray's children and their friends were in the house as officers entered. The eldest, all of 10 years old, stepped up. My brother woke up too, so I carried him into my room. And then I told Molly and Madeline to be quiet. Though it sure wasn't easy. They start searching with their big guns and then I start crying because I was really scared. Thank you again for watching everyone. As always, I really appreciate it. We hit 30k this month, which is really good. So if you found this story interesting, please give it a like. And if you want to see more kind of weird, lesser known cases, be sure to subscribe. I also have a Patreon now, so if you'd like to support the channel that way, I would really appreciate it. So, see you next time. A special shout out to my coolest person tier patrons on Patreon. I hope I pronounce your names correctly. Got Angelin F, Heather Iwaniuk, Toy King, and Teresa Ferguson. You guys are awesome and I can't thank you enough for the support. You can become a patron too with this link, also in the description. You're all the best.